uh, my talk uh, what i assigned is painful stiff classification uh, we have primary and secondary and primary we all know that there is a etiology is most of the time we don't know and secondary maybe predisposing causes are uh, uncontrolled diabetes and we have some hypothyroid conditions dipetron contractures they have uh, predisposing factors for development of frozen shoulder or adhesive capsule like Uh, we have uh, secondary stiff shoulder. Maybe it is because of post surgery, after uh, surgery of rotator cuff instability surgeries. We have loose bodies, chondral lesions, some extra articular causes, including scar formation around the shoulder joint because of burn. There is a muscle tightness, or there might be atrophic ossification. Some neurological condition like brachial plexus injuries, and uh, because of uh, head injuries, we have uh, stiff shoulder. talk about uh, uh, the clinical diagnosis in idiopathic primary is is a shoulder pain and stiffness more than 3 weeks and of course range of motion started decreasing at least 50% of uh, range of motion passive restriction in external rotation and abduction as by, as by sacos is uh, we include in the idiopathic adhesive capsulitis and almost in terms of degrees it is more than 30 degree in two or more planes and uh, radiograph is normal and uh, no arthritic changes is there and we all see in our clinical practice that uh, patient used to come with the mr scan with uh, uh, there is always always most of the time we see partial thickness tear of suprasthesis with adhesive capsulitis and it is very really a challenge if you put your scope in such type of cases you will end up in a problem that's why uh, in such type of uh, uh, mri reportings uh, you primary diagnosis is adhesive capsulitis don't give any any importance to partial thickness tear it might be signal intensity changes if we go through pathophysiology what, what is the problem with uh, what is their pathology in the uh, adhesive capsulitis is is a mainly synovitis and in the rotator cuff interval later on there is a contracture of rotator interval tissues coraco humeral and superior or inferior glenohumeral humeral ligament and it is because of increased excessive production of type 3 collagen especially myobo myofibroblast if we see the anatomy uh, there is a uh, contracture in the rotator cuff interval and there is a also thickening of the capsule and the thickening of the middle and inferior glenohumeral you know, ligament it, it's a, you you can easily appreciate uh, normal is all white and if it is a red, red inflamed it is a frozen shoulder and uh, all we know that they have, we have three phases freezing frozen doing phase it's last up to maybe 3 uh, years uh, initially uh, the pain starts uh, with uh, Uh, in a uh, adhesive capsulitis and uh, difficult to differentiate between the, it is a frozen shoulder or it is a impingement in uh, first initial month of uh, uh, symptoms and later on that uh, rotation get restricted first uh, uh, rotation goes is external rotation later on the internal rotation start decreasing and uh, in third phase significant loss of motion and uh, pain stiffness it's at the end of the motion minimal synovitis and uh, there is a increased thickness of axillary fold and later on profound stiffness minimal pain this last phase motion loss but start to improve slowly Uh, as per literature all the frozen shoulder get recovered by itself some literature suggest complete recovery in 2 years some says that after 4 years no almost normal function and minimal pain is there uh, again 94% of idiopathic frozen shoulder by recovered by itself but still some literature suggests that still even after 7 years 50% of patient showed some limitation of movement and stiffness is there Uh, what uh, all the, the treatment is available for initially it's a physiotherapy uh, sometimes uh, we used to uh, give ansets also and uh, at the uh, right time an initial phase of uh, uh, adhesive capsulitis intraarticular steroid works well and uh, there is a literature regarding distension arthrography manipulation under anesthesia and after that capsular release i do uh, i uh, in particular the uh, steroid under usg guided uh, so that i uh, i can uh, put my uh, steroid in a right place uh, for arthroscopic release if there is a uh, u1 after 3 months of physiotherapy and medication there is a continuous loss of movement patient find difficulty in uh, da daily activities 
second is after failure of manipulation under anesthesia and third is if there is a osteoporosis and chances of fracture if you plan for manipulation under anesthesia this is all uh, my indications for arthroscopy please uh, ideal time is again uh, not so not in the doing phase it's the frozen phase in between symptoms starting from 3 to 12 months uh, maybe in between 5 to 6 months is the ideal time for arthroscopic release it can be done in any in a b chair and lateral position it's uh, all uh, depends upon your uh, training and you require a, a pump and the arthroscope uh, and radio frequency ablator is very very important so this type of uh, patients because uh, joint is already tight vision is difficult entering the joint is again a challenging task the steps are we just do first synovectomy then uh, start releasing the rotator cuff interval there is we do coracohumeral ligament release and then comes on the superior inferior glenohumeral glenohumeral humeral ligament release and and last we need little bit gentle manipulation like arthroscopic uh, stiff knee release a short video how i do uh, i start just uh, use the uh, uh, radio frequency ablator uh, releasing uh, uh, the middle uh, glenohumeral ligament and inferior glenohumeral ligament you need a I think the video is not working. But uh, while do, it's uh, doing the uh, arthroscopic release, you have to be a little bit gentle. Otherwise, in a tight joint, you may damage scuff your, uh, scuff your cartilage of the glenoid and humeral head and need a uh, proper assistance. And uh, be careful while uh, cutting the inferior pole because it might, uh, because axial nerve is very close to that. And uh, you may use uh, your scissor, uh, scissor, arthroscopic scissor, or uh, or uh, radio pointed uh, vent of uh, radio frequency ablator. This is how uh, it's a posterior capsule last, and uh, this is how I do my arthroscopic release in uh, inferior. It's six o'clock position, as I already uh, explained. Uh, you can use your punch uh, uh, from arthroscopic basket, and you can use pointed radio frequency ablator to release the inferior axillary pouch or IAT. Uh, I In my practice, I in uh, stage 3, 4, I put first intraarticular steroid inj injection and uh, advise them supervised physiotherapy program. If it doesn't improve, then I do arthroscopic release. And uh, after that, we start start aggressive physiotherapy. Uh, frequency repetitions are very important. Capsular stretching, anterior, posterior, and abduction is there. Uh, this is how we uh, get proper range of motion if physiotherapy is properly done. And if we talk about post-traumatic shoulder stiffness, of course, it uh, can be we can divide into three major groups: extraarticular adhesions, direct injury group, intraarticular structures like loose bodies, tendon ruptures, and fractures, and scarring because of uh, damage to capsules and damage to muscles. And out of these most important stiffness we find in our practice is in the rotator cuff mainly in abduction and uh, sometimes because of uh, the sutures uh, remaining sutures they get uh, they create the fibrosis in the subacromial space and patient uh, really find difficulty in abduction incidence is around 30 to 32 percent and most of the time the reason is is that it is the post-operative immobilization, it is the glenohumeral as well as subacromial adhesions and uh, diabetes and sometimes underlying predisposing factors may play a role in stiffness. Uh, again, uh, this is what we categorized in rotator cuff repair, stiffness without retear, stiffness with retear, with untreated osteoarthritis and sometimes it's with the injury to deltoid and neuroscope. In uh, instability, we see a lot of patients with stiffness, especially in the external rotation because of the position of immobilization as uh, we do uh, use the uh, pouch arms legs and the, and the shoulder arm immobilizer. Uh, we uh, they keep the limb in the internal rotation. That's why nowadays we emphasize on uh, use the sling with the uh, pillow in between to keep the operated limb in the little bit neutral or external rotation. And uh, uh, the reason for the development of fibrosis is always around the coracohumeral ligament between the cuff and the acromion and rotator cuff interval is there. 
in conclusion, uh, early diagnosis is important uh, to intervene. And uh, the secondary causes, whether it is arthritis, whether it is a, because of some trauma uh, in, the, in the cartilage, loose bodies, uh, calcific tendinitis, it is always necessary to rule out, get the proper investigations. Uh, in the primary frozen shoulder, conservative treatment should be the first choice. If it doesn't improve, then arthroscopic release is the ideal uh, nowadays. And uh, stiff and secondary stiff shoulder, uh, identifying the cause and treating uh, is treating the underlying cause is essential. Thank you. Thank you for attention.